This is Twit. This week, Qualcomm claimed to have the first working 5G data connection on a mobile device. Joining us to explain what this means and when we'll get to use it is Sharif Hanna from Qualcomm. Welcome to the show, Sharif. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I am someone who constantly says gigabyte when I mean gigabit. Uh, I just <laughs> want everything to be faster. Um, what does this announcement really mean? So we're um, in the middle of putting together the definition for the next generation of cellular technology. So currently, you know, if you have, um, I would say, mostly if you buy a smartphone today, you have 4G LTE capability in it. So you can access the internet, um, you know, while on the go pretty quickly. And uh, the industry is currently working together to define the next generation of cellular, which is 5G, which promises a whole bunch of new improvements. Um, obviously, faster internet speeds is one of them, but also a whole class of uh, new services um, so we can connect more IoT devices um, and even make you know autonomous cars talk to each other in real time. So a lot of very exciting things coming down uh, very soon. So 5G, it's not five of anything, right? It's just, it's like the iPhone 5. It comes after four. I mean, does it, are you sort of making it up as you go along or is it an industry standard 5G? No, this is industry standard 5G. So okay. there is a standards body called uh, the 3GPP. Um, you know, it's it's funny because it started when we were defining the third generation and, ju and they just stuck with the name, I guess. So it's still called the 3GPP. Um, that is defining, um, you know, one generation of cellular technology after the other. And so 5G just literally means the fifth generation of cellular technology. So yeah, there is in fact um, a worldwide global standard for 5G that is being defined as we speak. And uh, we're going to be done with the definition. Actually, the first version of the 5G spec will be done this December. So we're really only two months away from, you know, the first um, specification standard for uh, for 5G. What um, I mean, I've heard a lot of people, and we, you know, we've talked about it on on Tech News Today a decent amount of times. Talk about kind of like this emerging 5G and how it's going to make everything faster and better and all that kind of stuff. But around that, things get really mucky because there have been a lot of different approaches. You know, everybody has kind of has their own. It seems like, anyways, up until now, everybody has their own take on what 5G actually means. What would you say is right. the most common misconception about that you've heard about 5G technology? Um, I think uh, the most common misconception is that nobody knows what 5G looks like um, and that no standard yet exists. Mm -hmm. The reality is that actually the industry has been working together for um, about two years now, um, putting together a definition of, of 5G. So we actually have a pretty good idea of what it looks like uh, and not just Qualcomm. I'm saying the industry as a whole. So this is, you know, companies that make chipsets that go into smartphones like us, um, as well as, you know, the mobile network operators like AT&T, Verizon, et cetera, and, and, you know, the international counterparts, and even the smartphone makers uh, like Samsung, LG, et cetera. So we've, you know, we've all been working together uh, for the past little while. And like I said, actually, things are looking pretty good. I think, you know, right from the get go, there were three kind of major objectives for this new generation. So one is obviously making, you know, internet connections on the go faster. And by faster, we mean way, way faster, right? So several gigabits a second will be possible, uh, you know, to a smartphone or a laptop uh, or to a car that has 5G connectivity. So that's one. And that one is pretty obvious, right? Everything just gets faster. The second one is the ability to support, you know, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of IoT devices, right? And in doing it in such a way that it's really very low cost to put 5G cellular connectivity inside any object that you can imagine, um, and also low power enough so that if it runs on a battery that, you know, the battery can last for a long time. So that's the second objective. And then the third objective is what we call uh, ultra reliable, ultra low latency. Um, and so that means that you can actually put a cellular connection on a mission critical device um, and expect it to behave just as you know, reliably as if it were connected by a wire. Um, so you can imagine a situation, for example, where you have autonomous cars, um, you know, um, that have to communicate to each with each other to coordinate, you know, maybe the two cars are coming to an intersection at the same time uh, and they need to coordinate between each other. You need to be able to, you know, for one car to send a message to the other car and you know with absolute certainty that the message is going to make it to the other side so they can arbitrate who's going to break and who's going to go through the intersection first, for example, right? And so we are already defining that into the standard right from the get-go as opposed to bolting on some of these features as an afterthought, uh, which I think in the case of 4G, originally we conceived it just for mobile broadband, so fast internet access on the go. And then we started bolting on 
you know, other technologies later. But from 5G, we're designing that stuff right from the get go. So we have a pretty good idea of, you know, what the technology is um, and, and how it works and what applications it's going to be good for. I should mention uh, that Qualcomm is one of our sponsors, but that's not why we had Sharif on. Yeah. You are uh, you you watched Twit and you saw Leo yes. and some others talking about it, and you said, you know what, I I'm gonna uh, explain to you a little bit about what 5G means, and and so I thank you for that. And and when we're gonna get it? So so when will we get it? Do you have any? I know this is you're still doing testing, uh, right? Right. So so when when can I get it? Well, this is why also part of the significance of the announcement this week, and so. Um, we are currently on track to have the first 5G enabled smartphones and networks in the first half of 2019. Um, and so what we have been able to do so far is actually get the modem, which is the chip inside your smartphone that connects your phone to the cellular network. So we've actually been able to get a working 5G modem. So we fired it up in the lab uh, a few weeks ago. We got it up and running and we first made the first 5G connection on uh, on a chip made for mobile devices. And we also announced our first uh, smartphone reference design for 5G. So that means that this is a device that really looks like a real smartphone you can hold in your hand. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to take it out into the field and start testing and, you know, optimizing our products um, and then giving it to the, you know, the companies that make smartphones so that it can actually make a 5G capable smartphone and have it in users' hands in early 2019. So we have we have a lot of work ahead of us, obviously, over the next 12 months or so. But so far, it's going well. We're making steady progress. And, you know, this milestone this week was, you know, another step uh, on this path. All right. So now the, the really tough question. So mm -hmm. 6G, <laughs> what do you think? You know, it's interesting. We actually have one of our VPs, uh, senior VPs, uh, who's responsible for modem product management. He's the guy that actually overlooks the portfolio of, you know, cellular modem products. He said this may be the last G ever. Um, and what we mean by that is, we're actually baking in, again, the ability to add additional features in the future and revise the standard uh, over the long period. And actually, we saw the same thing with LTE. So with the LTE standard, we've had about six revisions so far. So the technology has actually evolved from the very first networks that were deployed quite quite a bit to the point where you can get, you know, gigabit per second uh, over LTE today. Um, and so, you know, there's been an evolution of that standard. And with 5G, we believe that we will be evolving it for a very long time to keep adding new features and capabilities. So, you know, some people are saying, like I said, that this could be the last G ever, but never say never, I guess. Yeah, I was going to quote you on that. I'm, I'm ready yeah. for the last G because it's too confusing. I yeah. think, it's, I mean, is it money? Hey, is it, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, faster, better, um, smarter, um, you know, connectivity. It's interesting because we think of connectivity as kind of the new electricity, right? And, and, and what we mean by that is if you really can add, you know, connectivity that works anywhere, right, um, to any object that you can imagine, um, that really changes things, right? You can really start to capture a lot of data and control things remotely. And, um, you know, with, with the advent of AI and everything else on top of it, you know, there's a lot of benefits to society that we think that can come out of it. So it's uh, exciting times, early days, of course, but we're making good progress. So Bleak in our chat room asked what phone you were using uh, the 5G on, but it sounds like you it's not really a phone. It's just a prototype of something that you're using. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, yeah. So the, the early the early demonstration was on a, a prototype, uh, prototype smartphone, essentially. Um, it's not it's not commercial by any means. Yeah. So that's actually a render of it. Um, the president of our company held it up actually at our um, event earlier this week and uh, people were going nuts actually. So it was, you know, you bring together um, all the people in the cellular industry in one room and they see that and, you know, the, the phones were ringing off the hook, basically everybody saying that they want to see it, they want to start playing with it. So uh, it's exciting times and good progress. So what phone do you use on a regular basis? What's in your pocket right now? Uh, Galaxy S8. Yeah. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Sharif. Sharif Hanna is a product and technology marketing lead for Qualcomm Mobile. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you, Sharif. Of course. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Take All care. Right. Have a good night.